my advice, I'm not using it. Get balanced and get happy with Dr. Marissa. And this show is about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal. (laughs) Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. So I have shows and topics... Monday, Tuesday, happy days, Wednesday, Thursday, happy days, Friday, whatever, happy days, what a day, I love you, I love you too. (laughs) Best known as the mom from Happy Days, and she is a delightful 89-year-young Marion Ross to my studio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dr. Marissa, <laughs> this is such a treat for me. Oh. My goodness, you're a wonderment. Which is exactly the kind of guest that I like. Those who have gone through life, good and bad, and then taken those experiences to alchemize them into the person they are now and doing good on the planet. I'd like you to welcome Corey Feldman. If you're grateful for it and you say right away, thank you, God. Oh, my God, that's so beautiful. I'm so blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then guess what? More good things will come to you. Does this sound familiar at all? (laughs) (laughs) She's back again to mark my Cancer Awareness and Prevention Month show. Please welcome Fran Drescher. Hi, Fran. Supporting cancer, schmance. I really appreciate it. So what would you say are some of the biggest myths, Fran, that people have about cancer? Well, I would say that they think that there's a cure for it. (laughs) Okay. Instead of a cause for it. is the first call-in show when I get to be Dr. Marissa, the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And uh, people call in to get their life tires balanced and their critical thinking or their BS, their belief systems, smog checked. And today I am delighted to have Malie calling in from Birmingham, Alabama. We could go 90 days and end up having terrible sex. And then you say, well, the relationship's not all about sex. Well, if I'm not getting great sex from you, then I'm going to get it from somebody else. Right? That moose just got put on the table. (laughs) 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 And I see Josh and Jim. I have to agree. You're both nodding, Mm -hmm. nodding, nodding. Ramon's sort of half nodding because his wife's listening. (laughs) (laughs) But. uh, I understood what was going to happen if I, Muhammad Ali's youngest daughter, made public that I was going to become a boxer. So mm-hmm. I, I want to make sure this was the path that I wanted to go down. You are absolutely fabulous, beautiful inside and out. And I'm giving you Dr. Mercer's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award today. Thank you. When I go, I'm gone. Are you lonely? No. No, I knew that was going to be But I, I surround myself with people. I mean, I'm always the one cooking for things. Right? I'm always the one that decorates first and come to my house. All the orphans would have no place. I'm going to have no place to go. So okay, I can come okay, over. come on over. <laughs> Life is so amazing if we can see it. 
Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And welcome, you're tuned in to Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on NBC News, NBC News and NBC Sports Radio Station, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere, iHeart Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Amazon, Tiki Live, Rumble, Podchaser, Seeker, Spreaker, and more. <laughs> I am Dr. Marissa, your hashtag positively opinionated host now for the past 624 consecutive weeks and uh, going on se- uh, 12, 12 working years, 12 wonderful years uh, come May 1st. And I'm so glad that you're here. This is a show about hope and happiness. Gossip, no scandal, no K-words, no Kanye talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. And I want to welcome, I have new fabulous friends and connections that came out of the National Association of Broadcasters. My first time to that convention at the Las Vegas Convention Center. I'm still here. I was planning on driving back last night, but uh, had some great conversation till 930 and I was a little tired to drive back so thank goodness this is my beginning of my um gratitude sandwich that i'll count towards it uh i love to play craps and i called up my my uh place that i call and i said uh how much would a room be and he said dr marissa you are comped i'm like yes (laughs) that way i can be also a little more bright and early for my fabulous co-host you can see doctors in the house with dr marissa and Dr. Tiffany And she's here and I'm welcoming her back. I love having her Wednesdays when she is my partner in non-crime as we talk about things that affect you and your happiness, sometimes medical. She is a board certified uh, OBGYN out of Compton and she is also a, a, a Renaissance woman in the sense that when she could not practice Uh, her regular job, so to speak. She just adopted like eight more. So she, like me, should be a Jamaican, right? Uh, She's also a playwright, a singer, a songwriter, a poet. Um, She has books, uh, a new one coming out as well. So please welcome back to my studio, Dr. Tiffany Tate. Good morning, darling. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be here. And and I can't wait to start our gratitude because that's part of the reason why I am very thankful. I was waking, when I woke up this morning, I was like, you know, when you look at me, you're actually looking at a miracle. We are about to do our heart walk for the American Heart Association. And one of the reasons I began to write is when I developed pericarditis after my second knee surgery, they actually called a respiratory code on me and they debated whether or not to intubate me because they didn't know why I couldn't breathe. And I made this pact with God because I really thought I was about to die. I was on the same floor at the hospital at Kaiser that my mother died on. And I was at a diagonal from the room that she was on. And I was like, well, if it's my time, it's my time. But I was like, Lord, if I survive, I would write my autobiography. Well, of course I did. I still haven't written my autobiography. I ended up with poetry. Of course, that's how I ended up with my first book, Fluetry. But I made that pact with God and I started my writing career. So I recovered from my pericarditis and I'll be participating in the heart walk to combat heart disease and raise money for heart disease. Wow, I did not even know that part. Every, I think I know you, we've been uh, co-hosting now for a bit. I I don't count. I count on you to count because I got five <laughs> daily shows. You count how many uh, you are on. 
but uh, I, that's amazing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I am also grateful. I almost died of a DVT, a deep vein thrombosis, and a piece broke off. I had a pulmonary embolism, lost a uh, percentage from my lung. And uh, I, I gained it all back from uh, uh, creating this uh, balanced Tai Chi Gong, Tai, tai Chi and Qi Gong. Uh, and I'm grateful for that. So that's another thing we have in common, Dr. Tiffany. <laughs> and if you're wondering why we're starting with gratitude, it is my discipline hashtag discipline and good life habit to start every morning show with taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich as I um, co-gratitude with my host and anyone who is in the chat. So uh, we've just done uh, three, uh, your turn again. W the top of the bun is gratitudes, so we'll go for eight. If we see people who are not driving and then uh, in our stream, thank you for the finger, by the way, someone uh, already gave us, not that finger, but this finger. Uh, we love interacting with you. And if you wanna be identified, please put your name in the chat. YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, I'm everywhere. And that way you can uh, be acknowledged. All right, Dr. Tiffany, gratitude number four. Yes, and when I was going through this process, I was thinking about my tribe of support. At that time, I could not talk. That's how bad my symptoms were. I could not even walk to the bathroom. I had to use a bedside commode. At that time, my children were 14 and 16, and they took care of me. They would empty, empty my bedside commode, and my daughter would sleep next to me. I was in a hospital bed. She would not sleep in her bed. She slept next to me. She took care of me uh, and I would text her. And it was amazing because I could not talk to people. I could only text people. And my mom T would come and take care of me when the kids were at school. And it was amazing because my family rallied around me and my tribe really came to support me. And I really appreciate that. And I'm really endeared for that. And I can never uh, stop appreciating them for that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I am grateful that this is week consecutive week number 624 that I've been on air on camera. Grateful. They said I wouldn't last a year. Well, sorry. <laughs> what else are you grateful for? <laughs> um, <I'll>, Be nice. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have my glasses on, so I didn't know what what to, yeah. <laughs> what, what gesture you were doing. <laughs> this is just a good finger. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, one more. And um, I'm I'm still going along the lines of health. And when I had my my breast masses moved, because I I have a strong family history of of breast cancer, mm. and. I've had to have two uh, breast masses removed, uh, two breast surgeries, and I'm very thankful that I am still fighting that good fight, and I'm still under surveillance <laughs> uh, every year annually. And I just thank God for that because my body does not always want to behave. And in addition mm -hmm. to fighting my melanoma, <laughs> I have to fight all kinds of stuff. But I thank God that I take a look in and I keep on ticking with a smile on my face and I won't let anything keep me down. Like the song says, I get knocked down. I <laughs> down. I'm never going to keep me down. So I am very grateful that I am resilient and I persevere. Absolutely. And that is a wonderful gratitude list. I hope you do your own. If you're driving, just uh, don't type it. But uh, talk to the person, even if there's no one there, and say your gratitudes out loud. Then we go to the bottom of the bun. The bottom of the bun are gratitudes turned inwards. Uh, uh, semantically, I call them appreciations, just as Esther and, and Jerry Hicks and Abraham call them. What do you like about yourself? It is a very important question because it is my BS, my belief system, that... Uh, appreciation is the bedrock of good mental health that if you don't like yourself darling life will suck but if you do like yourself and you appreciate things about you that make you one of a kind wonderful then life's a joy ride so I will kick it off I love my ability to uh, uh, <laughs> I have to give you this example even though 
our breakfasts go long sometimes, but uh, it's it's our show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and we catch up on each other while through the gratitude. So that's the whole point of doing that too, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Mm -hmm. um, last night, I was invited to a private party after the NAB Creator Happy Hour Lab. And they, uh, I literally did not, I, I guess I'm tired. I've been, I love craps. I play craps pretty late and then I'm still up doing everything else and I guess by the third or fourth day it's catching up and they told me to go to resorts world but I heard recreation world so okay. I put in recreation world in the navigator and said Phoenix Arizona and I went uh so it took me like a good 45 minutes to be very creative and how to even find out what it was called because it was on the loop have you been to the Las Vegas convention center lately I drove past it. Oh, okay. They have this interconnected loop underground where you're in Teslas that line up and take you around to South Hall to West Hall. So I remember the destination was on the right side of three destinations, but I didn't remember the name. So I was like, like an idiot asking people walking by, did you take the loop? Did you see the destination? <laughs> and then if that wasn't good enough, every restaurant i went to to look for them i couldn't find them 13 restaurants and i would walk around saying have you seen people with this badge and and i walked through every restaurant i uh did uh five times my normal steps yesterday and um but here's the reason why i appreciate this i did not give up right and every single wrong place i went I met someone that I would have not met any other way because there's 40, uh, 65,000 people at this convention, more than Super Bowl. And the people that I met were exactly the people that I was interested in meeting uh, because I am looking for someone to take the content and repurposes or take the content and, and uh, um, uh, put it somewhere, uh, added platform. So. Comcast, uh, Sinclair, all the major names mm -hmm. that I had not been able to meet, I met last night when I was lost. So were you really lost? No, yeah. this was all divine, um, I call them what caught moments, what are the chances of that? And it's just proof that my UPS man, my universal power source, he delivers every day, even when I, with that I'm not lost, that all of that, but I mean, my, my, my hips don't lie. They're not happy that I did the whole trek around Resorts World. But anyways, that's all I'm going to say. That's going to cover all of my appreciations right there. Go ahead. Well, I will say this. I appreciate the fact that I am an encourager. And I will say that sometimes I take people on a journey, whether they like it or not. And in the end, they appreciate it. And I will tell you a story. I like to volunteer at the local Mason Lodge, uh, Lodge 13 here in Riverside, usually on most Sundays after church and we feed the less fortunate. And my graduate sorority also goes there and they volunteer sometimes with me. And I was with one of my sorority sisters and she's like, oh, sometimes I'm tired, sometimes I'm late. And when we go to conferences, I miss some of the events. And I said, well, you should room with me next time. I'll make sure you get there. And she's like, oh no, I don't wanna do that. I said, no. I'll push you. I'll make you. I'll drag you along. She's like, "Oh no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make you. I don't want. To, I don't want you to do that to me." <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious because she knew that I would encourage her and I would make her and I would make sure she's there on time and I would eventually get her to where she wanted to be. And so I like the fact that people recognize that ability in me to make sure that they do what they need to do when they need to do it. 
<laughs> that is a great quality, Dr. Tiffany. And we're going to cut that short right now as I continue to adjust myself here. Um, but thank you all for uh, joining us for breakfast. This is Dr. Marissa and doctors in the house with my beautiful inside and out co-host. Dr. Tiffany Tate. <laughs> and we just had breakfast together. I hope you continue for the next 27 consecutive days as you create this good life habit so that you can start your day in the most positive way. Because frankly, my dear, if you can't approve of yourself, how the fork do you expect anyone else to? <laughs> Okie dokie, here we go. It is time for the topic of the day. I want to come up with something more clever than that. We'll work on that. But uh, Dr. Tiffany Tate, take it away. What are we talking about today? Oh, that rhymed. Yes. So today, hmm, we are talking about rules of engagement and the rules of engagement between you and your partner. What do you know to do and when do you know to do it? Should you kiss your partner? When should you kiss them? When you just met them? When you just started dating? Should you invite them? Yes, no, maybe so. Should you go? Should you not go? Should you vacation? Should you in introduce them to your parents, your family, your friends, your children? Hmm. I don't know. Do you? When is the right time? Are there rules of engagement, as you so aptly put it when you uh, suggested this topic? And it reminded me of the book that had come out some years ago about the rules. And I thought it was the guy's rules that came out first, and then the girls wrote the, the rules. I think it was the code, like the bro code or the brothers or the men's code on answers to some those those things but related to dating so dr tiffany is focusing us on relationship once you're in the relationship are there you know suggestions or rules for the most uh for for the average couple uh, uh you know and this goes into my thursday topic tomorrow that james wanted to talk about which is uh do you have a kiss on the first date and when do you have sex do you have sex on the first date so that the more scintillating part's going to be tomorrow on straight talk dr tiffany is handling the when to take a vacation <laughs> <laughs> and more tame parts of that question. But uh, if you have any opinion on that or any experience on that, we invite you to go to my YouTube TV channel, which houses all 1,147 shows now so that you can uh, uh, free subscribe. You get an alert every weekday morning to tune in and be able to chat with us. So go there right now. So what do you think, Dr. Tiffany? Is there... Are there standards? I guess that was my first reaction to her. I'm like, well, I, I don't think, I think, you know, they're really, it's a personal thing. But now I'm changing my mind as you're speaking about this. Do, is there a message that is sent if you are the first one to say, I love you, want to go on vacation together, um, Go to the bathroom in front of the other person. I think that's a, a, a milestone. Go to bed without makeup. I have I had friends when I was in college who would literally get up and go put on a full thing of makeup and then hop back into bed. So you know, that's what they that's what happened on the uh, what is it the movie uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, uh, and I thought that was hilarious. And when I was doing my research, you know, because I, you know, my scientific mind, I'm like, okay, well, let me look it up, let me see what what's on online, and I began to say, okay, well, what what do the experts, the relationship experts, say? And I thought it was interesting. They were like, okay, well, how many dates are there? should there be before you, or how many weeks should it be before you consider yourself exclusive? I was like, oh, there are recommendations for that. Mm. I, okay, uh, I thought you just kind of decide, but no, there are recommendations for that. Did you know that there were recommendations for that? No, tell me what they are. Whoa, yeah, it says- Oh, wait, 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 let me get, let me take a guess. Okay, me take, take a guess. guess. Okay, so 
It's uh, uh, repeat the question for me. Uh, how many dates until you consider yourself exclusive? Did did they answer in months or how many actual dates? Okay, if a couple goes on one date a week. For, oh, and they're asking how many of those. Okay, so I would say, my favorite number is eight, but the first number that popped to my mind was nine. And so they're saying if a couple goes on one date a week, that's anywhere from 10 to 12 dates before they establish exclusivity. Oh, I was close. Mm -hmm. I said nine, right? Yeah. Honestly, the first number that popped in my head was 10. So, and they say some people can take anywhere from 24 dates. Those with wet feet, those yeah. with the, uh, yeah. Does it say who brings up that question first? Unfortunately, they do not. I'm thinking people who would more than likely have um, been hurt in the past and have issues with commitment, and they may want to be more cautious. And I wanted to address this issue because there's there are all these relationship shows that I love to watch because I consider myself to date a lot through Netflix. <laughs> Because I think it's a safe way to date. I learn a lot of, about dating through Netflix by watching these other people have problems. And I figure that's a safe <laughs> way to date. Don't judge me. Uh <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing with you, darling. Because my daughter and I watch Love is Blind. So Yes, yes. Well, Love is Blind and Married at First Sight. And if you watch season 13 of that, there was one woman, and I'm not going to say any names because that's just judgy, um, but she did not kiss her husband for like multiple, multiple weeks, even though she was married to him. She made him kiss her on the cheek. And that was, I thought that was interesting. Even though they said, I do, she wouldn't even give him a peck on the lips. And she made him she made him wait like months before she let him kiss her lips, even though they were married and they were living together. I and don't think I saw that episode, to be honest. Yes, it's season 13. Season, season yes, 13. Okay. Season 13 of Married at First Sight on Netflix. And I thought that that was pretty interesting. So that's why I wanted to look this up. I was like, that's smart. But they, mm -hmm. they they bond, they had a bond, and and I was just like, hmm. These just raised my my little antennas. So I thought this would be a very interesting topic to discuss. And so I just figured my scientific mind was like, well, let's look this stuff up. So then I learned about different phases to relationships, such as honeymoon phases and paper clipping and bread crumbing. And I had never heard of any of those terms. And... Um, the honeymoon phase of a relationship is anywhere from six months to two years. Had you heard of a honeymoon phase? Yes. I actually have my own pregnancy model of relationships. So that the honeymoon for my model is the first three months, the, the first trimester when you're all glowy and, you know, newly pregnant. So you're newly a couple. So mine's a whole lot less than yours. What did they say? Like the first year? So the, they said the honeymoon phase can last anywhere from six months to two oh. years. And they described it as an early part of a couple's relationship where everything, of course, is carefree and happy. And it usually lasts, you know, that during that phase. And it's, you know, the laughs, the intimacy and the fun dates. And then they described something called paper clipping which I had never I've heard of. I've never heard of that. Yes. And it involves um, the past dating partner or the ex who suddenly reappears out of nowhere. And you don't know. <laughs> yes, I know. You don't know why they're back. And you're not sure. Um, you don't even know. They don't even know why they're back either. And so <laughs> I'm like, hmm. And so um, the ex That's just hilarious. pops up. And they're confused, you're confused, but the ex is just reappearing and um, just getting in the way and getting in the thoughts and um, your your family and friends are bringing them up. And so um, 
they're just throwing little monkey wrenches in the relationship. And so your, your family is like, oh, you know about such and such. And, and you're trying to move on, but you can't really move on because there's this paperclip that's always dropping into your relationship. I didn't understand the paperclip until just now when you said, you know, it's a drop in, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's holding that place in your Rolodex. Yeah. And millennials, you'll have to look that up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a Rolodex is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rolodex. <laughs> yeah. What the heck is that? Wow, that I love learning new things. Uh, paper too. clipping. Are you a paper clip in anyone's life? <laughs> oh, like a paper clip in a love life. I never heard of that. Oh, wow. We have a, a, a comment from, from, um, from my sorority sister, Stephanie. Uh huh. He said, paper clipping, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, you, it's related to getting a paper cut. Yeah, and that's kind of what it is because it, it definitely interferes when you're trying to move forward and you can't really move forward when you're constantly looking back. Yes, that is definitely a truth about relationships. I apologize for the adjusting, but I think I finally got a good angle. So, um, so paper clipping, uh, how long it lasts? Oh, oh, I know what I wanted to, to um, comment on. You had mentioned that, you know, the one who maybe had gotten hurt in the past or was, you know, a little more insecure about the relationships is the first one to ask, are we exclusive or not? Now, I went to a different place, which was the one who th is, feels like they are more lucky <laughs> or the one that feels they are more uh, like, oh, wow. You know, I'm dating. I want to make that person mine, which is a little different than insecurity. It's more like that me, Tarzan, you know, you, my woman or that that's sort of the where I went on that. I don't know if they say anything in the research about that, but <laughs> I just thought that was like a different, uh, different thing. Yeah, that that is one of them. And then um I learned about breadcrumbing and dating. And oh, I was boy. like, breadcrumbing. Now, breadcrumbing, according to the Urban Dictionary, is when the crush has no intentions of taking things further, but they like the attention. So they flirt here and there. They get into your direct messaging, your DMs and texts just to keep the person interesting, knowing doggone well, they have no intention of having a relationship and they want to stay single. So they drop little breadcrumbs just to keep you on the line, knowing doggone well, they do not want a relationship. So they just drop little breadcrumbs here and there just to play with your emotions and to play with your feelings. And that's just well. Wrong. That is, uh, I, I don't want any of those sloppy eating seconds person. <laughs> I'm going to use our term there too. I did not know about paper clipping. That's and awesome. Bread crumbs. <laughs> that is awesome. See what happens when you tune in. This is Take My Advice. I'm not using a gift balance with Dr. Marissa, the morning show you're on KCAA NBC News Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind, home to the Asian Oprah and celebrating 25 years. Um, we are here because of the, the great guys that support this show. I want to thank all of them back in the studio, as well as my new sound engineer, JD. And this is a very special series called Doctors in the house every weekday, Wednesday morning with myself and Dr. Tiffany Tate. And we're talking about rules today, rules of engagement in a relationship, when to hold, I mean, no, that's a, that's a later time, when to hold and when to fold. We've talked about that before. If you missed that interview or that, I'm sorry, that discussion, then please do free subscribe on my YouTube channel where you can get a free alert every morning to tune in and access to my red carpet playlist with interviews with Halle Berry, John Travolta, and guess who I got a little soundbite from yesterday? 
Ooh, ooh. Jennifer Hudson. <gasps> oh, <gasps> nice. <laughs> And and she sang on stage like a little bit of a you know she was celebrating she got an award for her show she has the Den Jennifer Hudson show mm -hmm. and uh, and so she she was she was amazing and I you know I was kind of silly I had what time for like one question and instead of being professional get your shoes but when you see. <laughs> the picture of her shoes you will know why i asked that question dr tiffany you know i love that stuff <laughs> anyways uh dr tiffany has been giving us some great new learning and i love learning new things you can take it home now uh are you a paper clip is a question and do you leave breadcrumbs and most importantly do you pick up breadcrumbs so if you if you admit that you pick up breadcrumbs then we're here to help you go on a different diet because mm -hmm. we don't want you eating breadcrumbs because we know how worthy you are and you are way more worthy than being with someone who just gives you breadcrumbs instead of a full bite of their juicy selves. <laughs> trying to keep it clean. That was trying to keep it somewhat clean. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Tiffany. Oh, absolutely. And I, I came across so much. It was, there was just a plethora of information that I thought was, was very interesting. And um, I believe I also came across um, information about when should you introduce your partner to your family? And basically it's when you feel comfortable. And if you're dating someone for a year, two years, three years, and they're not taking you around their family, that should raise a red flag. Um, <laughs> but if you have just met them and you should have some space to let the relationship grow. I believe conversation and communication is key. We've done um, shows on communication and it is very key. Um, what? <laughs> communication, communication. <laughs> Couldn't resist. I know, right? <laughs> and so there's no set timeline um, when it comes to introducing your partner to your family, especially when there are young children involved. I was just about to say that um, when I think of families, there's two kinds of families. There's your mom, dad, brother, sister family, and then there are your kids family. And I don't even know, you can probably look it up, the statistics what percentage of, uh, you know, married, uh, sorry, divorced with children, single divorced with children, there are now. But uh, when I was getting a divorce uh, and when I was fully divorced and I was starting to date again, my rule was uh, nine months because it is one thing to involve yourself, uh, a child who's already gone through a, uh, you know, I wouldn't say, well, yeah, let's just call it what it is. It's not ideal to have kids go through a divorce at any age. Uh, it is something you do need to be able to look in the kids' eyes and say, I did everything I could, darling, to do this with your dad or mom. And we're we are just better people when we're not with each other but we love you that's one thing we let we both love you the same if not more and you're just going to have now two places where you can have a relationship a love relationship with your parents so that message means that the next time you meet a guy that you uh makes your toes curl that is the next weekend eat especially when they have kids it just adds a whole level of uh, confusion di and dynamics to your relationship as well as your children so that's i'm pretty adamant about that um 
people have uh, contacted me and thanked me for that advice because it saved them a lot of heartache. Because frankly, darling, you do not know people in the first 30 days. You don't even know people in the first trimester. That's the best part of them. It's the side of the fruit that's for sale that you see with no bruises. And then after the second, and in the second trimester, I call it the reality phase, right? When you start getting heartburn and feet swollen and all of that, that's the other side. It's not that they're bad, but no one's perfect. Now you get to see the bruises in the box, mm -hmm. yourselves as well. So until that's over, and then you decide in the third trimester that this is a person that you want to be with for uh, your next chapter in the book of romance, you've already no breadcrumbs, no paper clips, all, you know, 88% uh, smooth sailing, then you introduce your children. I will get off my soapbox, but I'm so glad you brought that up because it is one of those things that really takes down the happiness factor in the entire uh, circle of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is what uh, the experts will say, nine to 12 months. But again, know that. yes, nine to 12 months is, is a, a minimum recommendation. But again, there's no set time because you want to make sure the relationship is established and you don't want a lot of turnover with your young children. And what are the five stages of dating? Um, in essence, they say there's an awkward stage, an attraction stage, the uncertainty stage, the intimacy stage, and the partnership, partnership stage. And the awkward stage, um, is kind of like the chance encounter, kind of like what you had when you were meeting the people. And that kind of results with like the, in, the instant chemistry where you're like, oh, I, I feel the sparks. And um, I feel like I've known you forever. Yes, I'm drawn to you. I think this is going somewhere. Uh, let's let's see where we can what we can do. And then the attraction stage is like I'm really into you. I want to see you. I want to be around you. I want to spend time with you. I want more of your time. The I won't kick. I, I won't kick you out of bed for eating crackers. Time. Yes. Yes. I'm okay with your snoring. Or your snoring sounds cute. Or this. Or that. <laughs> or oh, you sound like a bear, but it's okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or wasn't that a cute little toot? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your fart smells, but I, I'll talk about it. <laughs> um, the uncertainty <laughs> day. <laughs> Moving from falling in love to contemplating long-term exclusivity. Um, and so how can you um, differentiate between challenges and a relationship that's a no-go in that uncertainty stage? Um, the way to spot if it is an unhealthy relationship is if you feel alone in that relationship. Hmm. So in that uncertainty stage, if you're feeling like, hmm, I love this person, but do I love them? Do they love me? Are they showing me affection? Are they not showing me affection? Do they want to kiss me? Do they want to touch me? Do they want to hold me? Do they not want to hold me? Um, and you'll see in, um, if you watch that that episode, there's, there's a couple where the woman is trying to do all the affection and the guy, he like builds a pillow fort around himself. Oh, and, I did see that one. I did yeah. see that one, yeah. Yeah, and she's like, really? Hello. Yeah, and he's like, well, when you get excited, you're like a little kid, and I'm turned off. And I'm like, really? Wow. Yeah, and so that was an unhealthy relationship. And then he was like, I want to stay married. And she's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, good. good. Yeah. Good. Like, very good, very good. Um, Can I just insert a um, uh, for a second, an example of this, I have a friend who has spent her entire relationship of, and she's been married for a good long, almost, I would say almost 10 years. And she, they love each other. There's no question about that. But the dynamic that they set up, and I love this model, which is why I wanted to introduce it, because I taught it to my kids and they use it when they talk to their friends. And this is 
the like in a, your example with the intimacy. So one person is doing this and then the other person is doing this. So one is always making the uh, lion's share effort and the other person is just meeting them in their comfort zone, which is not, you know, is far. And, and a lot of people do that because they love the person, right? They know that, you know, they don't like this or they don't like, so they don't want to rock the boat. And it ends up being a one person is satisfied and the other person is not. And, and for there's uh, uh, marriages, I got to interview Tony Tennille from Captain and Tennille, 39 years she lived like that until the 39th year and, the, and she said i i can't help him and people will you know criticize but i understand how you really do want them to be happy and so you think that by giving in or helping them right because of their past or what they're going through that you're but you really you're not helping them and you're not helping yourself first and foremost so if you're in that situation, I hope you hear that it's so important to love and respect yourself first so that you can have that healthy meet in the middle kind of relationship. Otherwise, you will end up with what uh, Dr. Tiffany's talking about. You know, you're, you're with someone and you're still lonely. And the formula is because you're, you're doing this. And when you stop doing this, it's a huge chasm right? When they're just doing that. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure that you're in a relationship where the intimacy is reciprocal and you want a partner who's going to meet you at least halfway. And a lot of times the love is going to be, is not going to always be 50, 50, but it should at least be 40%. <laughs> they should at least be coming towards that midline. It shouldn't be 10%, 90. And so you you want somebody who's going to try to meet you halfway at least. They mm -hmm. should be stepping towards you. You shouldn't be running towards the finish line and they're just kind of meeting you at the finish line. So make sure you're in a good, healthy relationship when it comes to that intimacy stage. And then when you get to the partner st partnership stage, you're moving in together, possibly getting engaged, simply deciding on just entering a long-term relationship if you're not ready for any of that commitment traditionally, because a lot of times people don't want that traditional commitment. And that's okay. Do you, boo? It's all good. And so just simply deciding to be together or be exclusive if that's what you want to do. Um, be best friends and lovers and spend hours, days, weeks, months side by side with this person. And only you know what's best for you in your relationship. And just enjoy happiness, limitless happiness, 88% of the time. Here, 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 here. If you've just, just tuned in and you're wondering what's going on in studio today, this is Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show in our very special Wednesday series called Doctors in the House with Dr. Marissa and Dr. Tiffany Tate. And we just got another person in our cashew gallery. Yay! Um, uh, uh, Dr. Tiffany is an MD, medical doctor. I am a PhD, piled higher and deeper. And the advice that we do recommend on the show is not from a professional, uh, you know, you're paying for this or licensing and all of that. Even though we do have the credentials, we just want to make sure that uh, you're not going and taking our, our advice and doing it and then coming back disappointed and coming and being angry with us. But uh, we do have experience in uh, quite a few things. Some of the things we're talking about just from our personal experience. And remember, if if I am giving you advice, that I'm not using. That's why that's the title of the show. So deal with it. <laughs> yeah. There's there's another term I learned. Oh, pocketing. Have you heard of pocketing? I've heard of pocket pool. Pocketing, <laughs> pocketing in a relationship. Pocketing or stashing is when someone you're dating hides you from their friends and family. And it is unsurprisingly a very toxic practice. Your partner has made a conscious decision not to introduce you 
to their inner circle. Right. And it includes real life and on social media. So you mm-hmm. should be very concerned if your partner is pocketing you. It's it like the a red flag. Wow. Thank you. Another new, I love new things. Um, so it's kind of opposite to the ace in your pocket, right? Yeah, it is not no, a good thing. It is not a good thing. It's the, you're not an ace. You're, you're an R. <laughs> Never mind. Um, uh, another letter in your pocket. So, wow. Uh, I have had experience with that, unfortunately. Um, hopefully, it doesn't happen as much anymore. Uh, but because I'm not Caucasian, and the in the first case, uh, the parents both were uh, very prejudiced. In the second case, it was the mom that did not uh, appreciate my non-whiteness. Mm. So, so I was pocketed for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, not a good feeling. You don't want to be. You want to be valued for eighty-eight percent of you, right? Because you're not perfect, but. Um, See, I want to be for a hundred percent of me. Forget eighty-eight percent. Ah! I want to be for a hundred percent of me. You know, you may not like me a hundred percent of the time, but I want to be valued a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> well, let's let's break that one down because, um, so if there are things that someone does, and you're in a relationship, and they am like, the other day I had someone chew with their mouth open and we were in public right Mm -hmm. and you could hear every bite and i didn't know i at the at that moment in time i didn't feel like saying anything because i honestly i didn't know how she was going to react i thought she was going to blow up and and when i did tell her later she did blow up so i was right not to to say anything in public but um like how is that a deal breaker or is that something that it's so awkward right when when someone does something in public that embarrasses you and they are your the person that you are branding with (laughs) if i take it out of the romance thing how how do you deal with that i think number one people are too sensitive in general and I think you should be able to say, you know, I think you should probably not chew so loud. Um, and I think it's okay to let people know that you are offended by certain things. But sometimes we we should just let some things go. Um, right. That's the thing. When do you? When do you? Uh, at what point is this my opinion and not the world's? And then and then I'm also preaching. You know, it doesn't matter what you think of me. So, <laughs> but yeah. And so, was was the food falling out of her mouth, or was were you just annoyed that her chewing was loud? Well, I could see other people looking at her. You know, and this oh, was a very hacking, and it was loud. <laughs> yeah, and and this was a very you know fancy hoity toity kind of you know. Was she talking and chewing loudly? Uh, I, I couldn't hear any words for the loudness of the chewing. Okay. So, so, so anyways, it's not a match. So I, I don't have to worry about that anymore, but it, 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 the, I guess because you were saying the pocketing part, Mm -hmm. I know some couples who come to me who say, you know, they just, after a couple of drinks, they get obnoxious. So, you know, I love him. I want to stay with him, but I, you know, I don't want to be around him when he's like that. Right. So mm-hmm. that's when I want, I don't bring him to any of my social functions. I, that's the pocket, right? I put him in my pocket. So, um, I, I, first I went through the 20 questions with him to see if he could identify as an alcoholic because that's a, then that puts it in a whole different uh, uh, genre. And I, I remember a woman that uh, uh, is a longtime listener, Cecilia, when she came on, she talked about 
that was an issue with her husband. Therefore, yeah, he was pocketed. Was it's there a, it's going to stop drinking at the function? Did, did he did he decide, was she able to get him to stop drinking so he could come to the functions and not drink? No. no. <laughs> well, then, you know, if, yeah. he's, if, he, if, he's, if he's going to drink and not behave, then he probably needed to not be able to go to the functions. I think that you have to look at behavior and not bad behavior. I think certain things are different. So oh, she's if, here. <laughs> I just I just talked about Cecilia without realizing she was in the chat because I'm remote and on my phone doing the studio. That is so funny. Hi Cecilia. So um she can tell you. He finally got treatment. Congratulations. <laughs> What are the chances of that? A what caught moment? I'm talking, using her as an example, not knowing she was in the chat. Ah, I love my life. And mm -hmm. welcome to Z Queen. That's your sorority sister. I'm just looking mm -hmm. right now at the at the chats. I, I, I don't like doing this because I don't want to put my finger into the camera. And, uh, but uh, let's see. He says, hi, uh, hi, I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Tiffany, for telling me other people are in the chat. No, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, oh my goodness, look at the time. Every time, Dr. Tiffany, time we must be having fun because time yeah. is flying. It is time for your final word. So I would say if you are unhappy more than you are happy in your relationship, it is probably unhealthy. And I would say try to date with intention and try to date to be happy. And God bless you and good luck. Wonderful. And we have a little more time than I thought. Um, but uh, so I just want to say, Cecilia, that's great news. He He's such a different person now. And I'm so, so glad. And, and I'm going to say that Credit goes to you for no longer doing this and uh, giving him some space to do his own work so that he can, you know, uh, make that make that change. So that's uh, amazing. My final word is I love the fact that Dr. Tiffany gave me three new words in my vocabulary. One is uh, breadcrumbs. If you are being strung along, I think is the old fashioned word for that by someone by, you know, they, they don't text you back. Here's a great example. Don't text you back. Don't call you back. Don't text you back. Don't call you back. And then when you just go, okay, fine. It's not a match. Then they reach out again. Hey, beautiful. How are you doing? And it's like, uh, 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 that is a no go. Uh, the other one was paper clipping. Uh, mm -hmm. Does your person uh, uh, have uh, long conversations with uh, a, a husband or the, uh, was wife or was relationship mm -hmm. uh, that um, that may be a little bit more than hanky panky? I think you gave a, a an example of that in our last show, Dr. Tiffany, with that guy. And then the third one was, wait, hold, wait, uh, breadcrumbs, paperclip, and, oh, pocketer, pocket, a pocket, a pocketbook. No, pocketing. <laughs> pocketing. <laughs> are you a hot pocket? <laughs> Or are you a cold pocket? <laughs> I'm so glad that you could join us today for all of this new vocabulary. It gives me a chance to uh, LOL, which is my favorite. We are coming in the last minute. Thanks for joining us. Dr. Tiffany, thank you for being the hostess with the mostest. Uh, it's all about balance. Peace in, peace out. World peace through inner peace. Uh, tomorrow, Straight Talk with Dr. Marissa and James Hawthorne. When to have sex when you're dating nice topic uh have the best day ever dr mercer reporting live from vegas wishing you the best